What's good, YouTubers and YouTube heads? This is JB Sports back again with another one. Former unified lightweight champion, Teofima Lopez, aka Mr. Takeover, was able to upset the apple card once again. Just like he did in a Lomachenko fight when he was a underdog going into that fight. And he was able to get the dub. He'd get it again. As he was able to get the dub as a decided underdog versus WBO Junior Welterweight Champion. And Lenio Junior Welterweight Champion Josh Taylor. Who was formerly the undisputed Junior Welterweight Champion. And the belts that he lost, three of the four belts that he lost prior to this fight with Lopez. He lost those belts outside the ring. The guy was undefeated in 19 fights, 13 KOs. He was on many people's pound for pound list. Wasn't on my pound for pound list, but was on many people's pound for pound list. Teofima Lopez put on a vintage performance, showed the timing, showed the power, showed the speed. The athleticism was just too much for Josh Taylor. Now, a lot of people are gonna make the excuse and say that Josh Taylor was out the ring too long. His last fight was well over a year ago. But even if he would have had a fight in between the fight with Catterall and the fight this past Saturday with Lopez, I don't think it would have made a bit of difference as Teofimo Lopez proved to be the better fighter. With all that being said, Teofimo Lopez made some interesting comments after the Taylor fight. He said that he's retired. That he's had a beautiful career. He's done what you call double greatness. Became undisputed, that's him talking. Became undisputed at 135 and beat the undisputed guy at 140, even though he only had one of the four belts. He lost those three belts outside the ring, like I said earlier. So he basically said, I'm double undisputed, I'm double greatest, and I have nothing else to prove inside that square circle. I only made one million for the Josh Taylor fight. So he's basically insinuating that, look, y'all gonna have to pay me big boy money. I'm not finna get back in that square circle for small changes, basically what Teofima Lopez is stating. And all this retirement talk is fugazi. All this saying that I'm done with the sport of boxing is cap. Teofima Lopez is doing what you call a negotiation ploy. Negotiating ploy. That's what Teofima Lopez is doing, ladies and gentlemen. He says he wants to be making a hundred million dollars on his next contract but he has a contract with top rank boxing for three more years those numbers and those terms are set in stone so maybe this is a negotiating ploy to get that contract renegotiated but you very rarely see a contract getting renegotiated in the sport of boxing you see it all the time in other sports like nfl nba major league baseball there's a lot of examples of those people getting contracts renegotiated or getting extended or whatever the case may be. But you ain't going to see that in this situation. I think that top rank boxing is going to get into a stare down with uh, Teofima Lopez. We're going to find out who's going to blink first. Because the bottom line is Teofima Lopez was fighting in the theater in the Master Square Guard. He wasn't fighting in the main room. He was fighting in a small room. Had a great crowd, sold out. I think the theater holds 5,000, so it was definitely sold out. Had a great atmosphere from what I heard and saw on TV. And I heard that the fight did around a 600,000 gate. So you put that example up against him on $100 million, the numbers don't add up. If it ain't making dollars, it ain't making sense. Now what they could do is say, okay, we're gonna put you on pay-per-view versus Devin Haney in your next fight. If you do a certain amount of number, you prove to be a pay-per-view star and you get the dub, or even if you don't get the dub, you put on a good performance and you show that you are attraction in the sport of boxing, then we can reneg renegotiate your contract. But we cannot renegotiate your contract off of fighting in a small room in Madison Square Garden where you did a 600,000 gates. And we'll see what the uh, TV ratings are when they come out this week. So we will see what happens. And <laughs> we will see what transpires. But I'm calling Cap on Teofima Lopez saying that he's retired. Teofimo Lopez said, God damn, I made a million on my fight with Josh Taylor. I should have made at least 10 times more than that in this last fight. And I'm not gonna settle for 
that type of money any longer from top rank boxing. You must show me the bag, Bob Arum, but Bob Arum has got the contract and the terms agreed to on his side. And he can say, look here, you got three years left on this contract. Instead of coming to us behind closed doors and saying, look, I, I think I should be making more. Can we negotiate? You're going to go out in the public and ride to the fight and say that you retired and the top rank is paying you pennies and you're a hundred million dollar fighter. You got fighters out here that haven't done half of what you've done and they're getting 15 million a fight. You're putting all that out on front street instead of handling your business like a businessman behind closed doors. And then if they don't give you what you want, then maybe you go public. But you're doing it the opposite. You're going public before you go behind closed doors. And that is a recipe for disaster, in my opinion. So we will see what happens. And <laughs> we will see what transpires. But Teofimo Lopez put on a vintage performance. I was watching that fight this past Saturday. He reminded me of a young Roy Jones Jr. But he jumped up and caught him with that straight right hand. That was vintage Roy Jones Jr. The next fight, Teofimo Lopez, this is what I want you to do, because it's going to be the next fight. You ain't retired me. Miss me with all that. I want you to do the old behind your back. Put two hands, put two of your arms behind your back, and then catch him with a roundhouse right like Roy Jones did <laughs> when he was on top of his game. He was the number one pound for pound fighter. But Teofimo Lopez is definitely going to be in my top 10 pound for pound. I didn't have him in my top 10 going into this fight, but I didn't have Josh Taylor in my top 10. So a lot of people saying, man, he beat two top 10 pound for pound fighters. He can retire right now and be a Hall of Fame fighter. And I agree with that. I believe if Teofimo Lopez retired now, he would be definitely a Hall of Fame fighter in my opinion. But the problem is he's only 25 years old and there's a lot of money to be made at 140 pounds. I just heard that uh, Jose Ramirez came out today and said that he's going to ask top rank for the Teofimo Lopez fight. But if I'm a uh, Teofimo Lopez, he got a lot of options. He could uh, wait to the end of the year and see what Tank going to do. Tank is in jail right now, but uh, from what I'm hearing, he's going to be back at the end of the year, probably around by December at the earliest, October. But he's going to be definitely coming back at the end of 2023. October, November, December, somewhere in there. If I had to take, make an educated guess, I would say probably December when you'll see Tank uh, next fight. And if Tank can't get the Haney fight, which is uh, looking uh, slimmer as the as days go by, as uh, we've seen that uh, Haney's father, Bill Haney, was at the fight, Lopez versus Taylor. I think him and his son's going to be at the fight coming up this week in New Orleans with uh, WBC junior welterweight champion Regis Prograves. So they seem to be uh, heading toward the directions of fighting at 140 pounds. Bill Haney said this past weekend that his son has been at 135 pounds since he was, what, 16? So he's been at 135 pounds his whole career, and his body is telling him it's time to move up. So I expect his next fight to be at 140 pounds versus Regis Prograves, who I believe is the front runner to get the fight if he wins this Saturday, and Lopez, a.k.a. Mr. Takeover. So we will see what happens, and we will see what transpires. But Teofimo Lopez! is saying that he's retired that he has fought his last fight and he's hanging up his gloves but i believe that it is a negotiating ploy but i think he's doing it backwards i think he should have went behind closed doors first and tried to renegotiate his contract after this uh great win over josh taylor instead of going public this ain't gonna do nothing but make top rank uh, stand firm 10, 10 toes down and say look here you got a contract for 3 years we don't have to do anything you're going to come out here and blast us right after the fight saying that we basically paying you pennies you agreed to this contract ain't nobody forced you to sign this contract you agreed to this contract and then what you said prior to the Taylor fight that uh, top rank is catering toward black fighters that he bought Bud Light to top rank, basically saying that top rank, uh, <laughs> he's basically saying I made top rank $100 million, so they need to pay me back $100 million because that's what I bought to their company. So we will see what happens, and we will see what transpires. But it's only a few fighters that get a $100 million contract. Tyson Fury got a $100 million contract, but he's a heavyweight, and he's the number one guy in the heavyweight division. He was coming off a draw versus Deontay Wilder. Well, a lot of experts felt that he won that fight, so he's in strong position, even though he didn't get the win. I guess uh, Teofimo Lopez is saying, look, he, he he was coming off a draw and got $100 million. I'm coming off a win over a, a powerful pound fighter, and I beat another powerful pound fighter a few years back, so I should get at least $100 million. So that's what you should be bringing to top rank behind closed doors, not putting all this out for the public to hear, making top rank 
wear that black hat, making top rank look like they messing over you, getting 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 over on you. You shouldn't be uh, doing it that way, in my opinion. Handling your business behind closed doors. Then, if they don't agree to your demand, then maybe you go public, try to force their hand, or maybe then you try to say, look, can I buy out my contract? I want to shop my services to people out that I feel that appreciate me. Let me uh, go in the open market and see what my worth is. Because right now you're holding me down with this contract that's paying me less than what I deserve. That's how you handle business instead of coming out here after the fight with all these outrageous demands and then saying that you are retired. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. Follow me on Facebook, Gerard Briscoe. Like, share, and subscribe to JB Sports. The man, the myth, the legend. And I holler.